welcome, guys. Hello. Hi, thank, thank you. you. I, I've been having a lot of fun with Abdullah lately. We work together and I've been learning a lot about game dev. It's something that it's, for me, it's like working like in corporate and like you're always thinking of .NET for like enterprise and web. And like, I think it's awesome that we're now gonna show a little bit of how to game development with .NET and Unity. Take it away. Awesome, thank you. Yeah, I'm excited about it too. So we're gonna talk about real-time 3D games with .NET and Unity. I'm John Miller, and I'm a program manager on the Visual Studio for Mac team, but I'm also the program manager of the Visual Studio Tools for Unity, and I'm joined by Abdullah. Uh, do you wanna introduce yourself, Abdullah? Yeah, I'm Abdullah Hamed, or Abdullah Hamed in Arabic, and I am a PM uh, for .NET game development. Here's a quick look at what we, are gonna cover here and we can follow a little .NET bot around our map here. So we're gonna start with the over, overview of Unity. So I'm just gonna give a quick demo and instructional kind of and uh, look at what Unity is and I'll show it to you and we'll do something really quick in there. We have about 20 minutes, leave some room, uh, time for questions, talk about .NET with Unity and the tools for Unity and Visual Studio. A little bit more of what Unity offers. It's not just a game engine. So there's some other th cool things there to talk about and what the next steps are if you wanna get started. And we have some helpful links and resources and feel free to ask questions. So little .NET bot here wants to know what is Unity? And uh, I, many of us have heard Unity as a game engine, but I grabbed this from the Unity website and I think it explains it best. And it's, mo it's more than just a game engine, it's a platform and it lets anyone, um, you and me, create powerful video games and other real-time 3D and 2D applications. We're gonna talk and I'm gonna demo a little bit about 3D, but you can do everything in 2D um, as well. And why would you choose Unity as a .NET developer? Um, so I've highlighted a couple of things here. It's a familiar development environment. Uh, you can work in Visual Studio, you can use uh, C Sharp and .NET. You also have a really good kind of write once and deploy everywhere story with support for over 20 platforms. Does it support like things like VR and consoles also? Yeah, so you can uh, target all the major consoles um, and even that Oculus you have behind you, you can even deploy to that if you want to. So yeah, so 20, 20 plus platforms, I can't always remember all of them, but all, all the major ones are, are supported. Uh, there's also tons of learning resources online. Uh, so there's a Unity Learn portal and we have uh, tutorials on our .NET site as well. And there's a very vibrant community. There's the Unity forums. Um, and since we're working with .NET, you can also leverage the .NET forums if you have specific questions about how to use .NET technologies or C Sharp or questions like that. And then there's uh, more than just the, the tooling I'll show you today. There's a whole suite and tools and services that we won't have time to look at, but I will share some links with you at the end and encourage you to take a look at them because there's a lot of cool stuff that Unity offers there. And what's the cost of Unity? So the cost is you can get started for free. Um, and then it kind of scales from there, depending on your team size and kind of uh, what your needs are. So as, a, as an individual, it'll be free and you can uh, take a look at it uh, right now if you want to. Cool. So I think that's what we'll do. We'll jump into, I'm just gonna get into the demo and spend some time there and take, uh, take a peek at what Unity is. So let me jump over here um, to Unity. Uh, can you see Unity, Abdullah? Yeah, I do. Okay, great. So. I think real quick before I do that, I'm just gonna launch the Unity Hub because I wanna highlight this as a .NET developer. When you wanna start a new project, you're probably used to going into Visual Studio, going to File New and choosing some project templates. But when you start a new Unity project, things are gonna be a little different. You're going to start in the Unity Hub. And what you're gonna do is uh, click on this Projects tab and you can see here I already have some projects. Here's your new project button. Um, there's also a tab here for Learn where you can download uh, like tutorial projects that kind of walk you through step-by-step step with different themed games here. There's a Lego game that just came out that's really cool. And if you like FPSs or um, there's a karting game kind of like Mario Kart and uh, some platformers, there's just different things you want to do with learning paths. So that's cool. Um, there's links to all the community stuff that I mentioned earlier. And then this is kind of like the Visual Studio installer in the sense that you can kind of manage your installations of different versions of Unity here. And you can, I can see I have a couple different versions. I have a beta and I have a couple LTS versions and uh, that's a, that's a, this is a useful tool. So this is where you'll start. Um, I'm not going to create a new project here because it takes a little while to launch Unity. So I will just open the one that I already have, which is this .NET Comp project, and here it is. So this is the Unity Editor. And just a quick overview of the Unity Editor, if you've never seen it before, 
um, because it can be a little overwhelming, uh, maybe if you've never seen it. Uh, so we'll start real quick. So um, let me see here if I can bring up my drawing tool here. So on the left here in the hierarchy, this is everything that's inside your scene. And the scene is kind of like uh, your, your stage where you're going to be putting different objects like cameras and lights and game objects and uh, sprites and 3D models and everything like that. And then the game view here on this side, this is uh, what the camera sees. So you can see in my scene, I have by default, I have a, a camera and a light and the camera, if I click on it, it gives me a little uh, preview of the perspective and that's what I see in the game view. Um, and if real quick, I'll just create a 3D object here. I'll right click and go to a cube, put a cube in the scene. And let me see where that cube is in relation to my camera, just so I can get it into view here. Looks like it's out in space somewhere. So let me see if I can move that. Okay, so now you can see. So there, there's an example of uh, the, the game view kind of updates in real time as you change things in the scene view. The game view is what you'll see when you actually play your game. So it's helpful to be able to see this kind of iterative experience in the editor. And then we go down to the project view, um, which is down here. And this is kind of a, uh, this kind of shows all the files and uh, yeah, all the files that are in your project. I already have a couple folders in here that I've organized things in. So I have some materials and uh, some script files, which are C-sharp files, which I'll, I'll show in a minute. So this is where you, all your files are and you can move them around and put them in your, in your scene. The inspector, is over here on the right hand side and this is like a properties panel for anything that you select in the hierarchy view anything that's in your scenes you can see as i click on the camera i get some camera specific things i also get a transform which defines where this object is in 3d space i have some different camera options and it also has this other thing called an audio listener the light has some different properties as well so it's kind of like what you see and when you're in visual studio and you select um, an object in a designer and you want to customize properties you know, the object is. So that's the Unity editor. Um, I think real quick, so what I, what I do here is just kind of show in the scene, um, what I was gonna do here is, is kind of build out a little platformer level, but it takes a while to do that. And in 20 minutes, I don't have a lot of time. So real quick, I'll just show this toolbar up here on how to manipulate some objects, and then we'll jump into a scene I've already prepared and kind of show you what I've done with it. Um, so Unity has some kind of built-in 3D primitives. So you can see I added a cube, you can uh, use this toolbar up here at the uh, up here at the top, and you can uh, translate things and move them, grabbing these anchors in the scene view. You can see that's moving around in 3D space. That changes the transform over here, um, over here in the proper in the inspector, and you can rotate things. Um, you know, get them positioned however you want. You can scale stuff. You know, if I want to scale this out like this, and that kind of maybe uh, starts to make a little bit of my base platform, and I'll just hit Control D and duplicate this and bring it up here. Uh, maybe scale this down a little bit, and maybe one more platform to keep it interesting. And there we go. So I've already kind of made my my level here, and to make it a little more interesting. Um, I've already spent a little bit of time uh, making it a different scene. So what I'll do is I'll open up another scene file, um, which has all the, the data for all my objects in it. I'm not gonna save what I just made. And here's that same kind of thing I just did, but I've added a couple more boxes and uh, made a character. So here's my what I'm calling a player. You can see I have it over here in the hierarchy view. And I have some other cubes that I'm gonna represent as you know as, as a pickup I'm calling it, but you can think of it like uh, any other platformer, maybe with some coins or some type of health thing or something that you wanna pick up. And I've put them throughout my platforms. And I've added some text uh, up here to show uh, how many pickups I, or how many points I've got as I pick things up. So if I just play this quick, I'll show you what it does and then I'll, I'll try to explain a little bit of how the interaction works. So here, here we go. I'm pressing um, A and D to move my character left and right. And you can see my pickups kind of rotate. And as I walk into them, um, they disappear and I get 10 points. And if I keep picking them up and if I press space bar, kind of make it up there and say I was any good at this. <laughs> there you go. Um, so yeah, so that's my real time 3D game that I, I made in about 10 minutes with some boxes. And um, that's a great start.
So let me just dive in a little bit of exactly what I did here. With my player cube, I needed to, I mentioned I was doing things with A and D and I wanted to move it. So what I did is I went into to down here in my projects folder, you can see right here in scripts, and I created this C sharp file called keyboard movement. The way you create code and create scripts in Unity is you right click, you hit create, and then C sharp script. And that creates a new um, file and I'll just name it something for now, but um, I created this code. When you double click on it, it'll open up in Visual Studio. Um, here's my generated solution. You can see here, here's the scripts I already have that you saw in the Unity project. Here's my keyboard movement script. So a couple things, um, we'll take a look at test scripts since that was a brand new file. You can get an idea what a, a, like a file new looks like uh, for a mono behavior class, which is part of the Unity API. And that's what all, uh, scripts will subclass uh, by default. And that gives you some uh, special methods here that you can see like start and update are added by default. And mono behavior has a bunch of different um, methods. You can think of them sort of like a virtual method, but they're not implemented that way in C-sharp. Uh, they're more like a callback, uh, so which is why it's not overridden here. But you can hover over it here in Unity or Visual Studio will tell you um, kind of what this method does. You can see start is called just before any of the update methods. So when uh, this script or when this object is first enabled or the game starts running, starts called. So that's like your start callback. I'm gonna do something on initialization or something like that. Um, kind of like a constructor here um, is probably when you would wanna use this. Um, there's some other methods that are similar. And then update is called once per frame. So this is kind of like where you would handle some game loop type of information. So if we jump back over to my keyboard movement, take a look at what I did in the start and update methods here. So if we look at the uh, start method, uh, all I'm doing in here is just getting some access to what's called a rigid body. I won't dive into that, but it's uh, something for Unity's physics system and it's gonna allow me to jump. Um, so every frame, jump down here to the update method. I am, let me just zoom out a little bit because I think this is big enough. Uh, first thing I'm doing is just checking um, you know, what I'm doing on the horizontal axis, I wanna be able to move my character left and right pressing A and D. Unity has some helper methods for that and that's what this is. And then I am just multiplying that by some speed value that I'm doing so I can move a little faster or slower depending on what I like and scaling it by how much time is passed per frame. Uh, so this is just a little technique in, in game development. So that way, if I'm running at 60 frames per second, um, I'm not any different in movement velocity than someone who's running at 120 frames uh, per second. I wanna scale it based on the time that's actually changed, not how fast my CPU is. And then I'm just moving that character um, on the X, Y, Z, and I'm only moving on X here. So I'm passing zero into sort of things. Translate is a little helper method in the Unity API and checking for space. And you can see kind of what I'm doing here and then using the physics system to make my character jump. And Here's another helper method that Unity provides for collisions, part of the physics system here. And these are all kind of things you learn as you go through um, the Unity API. So don't feel like you have to digest all this right now because you can definitely walk through one of the tutorials and kind of do things step by step and it'll be uh, a little easier to get it right. Um, but I think it'll illustrate what, what the power of it is. Um, so what I want to talk about real quick is one of the key things with Unity and, and uh, scripting and kind of the interop between it. There's a little bit of magic happening here. So let me jump. Back over to Unity and show talk you. Talk about debugging now. Yeah, let me. Uh, awesome. Let me. Yeah, let's do that. Let me jump into what the, these inspector properties are, and then we'll uh, do some debugging. Cool. So I keep circling with my mouse. I apologize. Um, so I'm clicked on my player object over here, and here's how I have added my movement script to define the behavior for that. So what I've done is I've just take my movement script and I've just dragged it over to here. If I just remove that real quick, I'll show you. And yeah. If I just drag this over here and put it on there, that's how you link up the script to that object. And now whenever I use the keyboard, that object's gonna move based on the behavior I just showed you in the update method. Here's the speed thing. I think if we jump back over to Visual Studio, I can highlight this serialized field attribute is a special piece of the Unity API that tells Unity to, to expose this field in the Unity editor, so in the inspector. So you can see here it's called speed. Um, Unity does a little bit of niceness. Let's see, go back 
to where did Unity go? I lost it. Here it is. It makes it capitalized just to make it look nice in the inspector, but it's that same variable. So if I tweak this as 10, um, then we can see if I play my game. Now my character will be, oh wait, maybe I did. Yeah, so if I would be a little faster, but if I do maybe 20, it'll be even faster. And I could do it maybe 30 and you know, I can kind of tweak my parameters of my game a little bit here. Here I have jump power set to five. If I boot that up to maybe 15, he's probably gonna rock it up in the air. So there he goes, he went even higher. Uh, so you can, this is kind of one of the uh, great things about working in Unity is you can code in C sharp and expose these properties or these fields really uh, in Unity and then be able to tweak them within the editor and get kind of this uh, live editing and uh, iterative experience that's uh, a lot of fun and gives you a lot of power and saves you time. You don't have to code everything and go back and recompile and build uh, everything all, uh, completely. So I do mm -hmm. mentioned debugging. And from what I understand too, if you if uh, a variable was public, then it also appears in the editor, right? Yeah, that's another trick you can do. So, it, so for example, if I delete this and just make it a private field, and we go back to, I keep losing where Unity is. I go back to Unity here, you can see it recompiled now that I gave focus back to Unity, and now the speed is gone from the inspector because I no longer have that attribute. But if I go back to Visual Studio and make it public, which is another option, uh, depending on kind of what you like to do, if you like to have public fields, maybe you don't, so then you can use ser the serialized field attribute. Um, see if I can, there we go. There. Now, see, now I have uh, speed back as well. So there's different techniques there to expose these things, either use serialized field or make them public. And then Unity knows to put that in the inspector. Debugging is really uh, simple as well. Let me go back to Visual Studio. And what you can do, let's say, I have a problem here in my movement script and I want to look at, look at it. I can just put a breakpoint and hit attach to Unity. And uh, Visual Studio will attach like you're used to. Go back to Unity and press play. Once my game starts running and that code's called, there I'm jump back over here and I'm debugging and um, I'm back where I want to be. I can step through and I can look at you know different objects in here. I've got my autos and locals and everything you would expect uh, in the Visual Studio environment. So that makes debugging really simple. Cool. All right, so, okay, so that is how you can start making real-time 3D games. That's how you can use Unity and Visual Studio together. Let me jump back over to my, let me stop Unity quick. Back over to my presentation here. Let's talk a little bit about what .NET with Unity means. Uh, there's some, uh, some things that align and then there's uh, some nuances that you have to consider when working with Unity. So .NET with Unity is, uh, you get to script in C Sharp. So that if you are familiar with C Sharp, that is a bonus. Uh, there's, you also have access to all the .NET system APIs. Uh, I put a little asterisk here because there's a lot of platforms that Unity supports and they do a great job at making sure that the .NET system libraries work on all those, but it's, it's not always guaranteed. So you do have to uh, make sure that whatever you want to do in the .NET APIs is supported on the platform that you're choosing to target. And then you also can use uh, third-party .NET libraries that you might love to use already. Uh, but with the caveat here, which is the asterisk, that they may not be tested on the platforms that Unity supports either. And also, you're working in a mono environment here, too. So that's something else to consider when using uh, third-party libraries. Some differences I wanted to highlight. Uh, so project creation, so getting started is a little different. Uh, you don't do file new in Visual Studio. You download the Unity Hub, and you go from there, and you start a project like, like I showed. And then also, there's Unity has its own packaging system. So can I use like NuGet packages here, for example? So there's no official support to use NuGet packages uh, with Unity projects uh, because Unity has its own packaging system. But we do have some documentation on our website on how you can use NuGet packages uh, with Unity projects. Uh, but again, you have that same caveat as you have to make sure that they support the platforms and the runtimes that you're targeting. Publishing is also different. So there's uh, all the publishing support um, would be inside the Unity editor. You kind of build out your binaries from there rather than do things from Visual Studio like you might be used to. Yeah, that's a lot different. And there's some different Unity conventions and practices. And I think a good example of that is what I just showed. So you have this like concept of having public fields or these attributes on fields so they expose to 
the inspector. That's kind of a Unity unique thing that you have to learn. Some of the naming conventions are of the Unity APIs are a little different um, than what you might be used to in the .NET APIs. Uh, but that those are just little nuances you get used to as you uh, as you learn Unity and, and get familiar with the environment. So what do we do in Visual Studio for Unity developers? So we have the tools for Unity, which is a free extension um, that you can install. It's included with VS for Mac. And it is also available in the Visual Studio installer. It's called the C Sharp uh, Game Development with Unity. And yeah, it's on both Windows and Mac. Uh, we have a, the debugger, which you saw. Uh, you can attach the debugger. You can use, uh, you can step and inspect and use locals and expressions and conditions and all those things that you would love to do in debugging. Uh, we have IntelliSense support for the Unity API methods. Those so those things like start and update. Um, IntelliSense will still help you with those, even though they are kind of like magic callbacks that are not defined anywhere in code. Um, all that stuff will still appear for you. So it, it helps you out as you're at learning and also as you're programming. And then we have Unity specific diagnostics. So there are some, some gotchas with the .NET APIs and, and maybe techniques that you might use as a .NET developer that may not be the best practice in a game environment, or they may just conflict with some of the runtime choices of Unity. So uh, our diagnostics will help you uh, kind of learn those best practices and then give you quick fixes so you can change your code quickly. And then we have other productivity helpers built in to help you generate code a little faster as well. And if that's not enough for you, uh, like I mentioned earlier, Unity is more than just a game engine. It has all sorts of services. One of my favorite is the asset store. So if you're not an artist or maybe you just want to prototype something, the asset store is a great place where I like to go and download anywhere, anything like 3D models, 2D sprites and art um, to code like code packages and complete projects. Like if you have, you want to, like, want to do like a, I don't know, a, like a Tetris style game or an infinite runner style game, but you don't really want to do everything from scratch. You could go check out the asset store and there's a lot of complete projects on there um, that you can download and go ahead. Yeah, and one of the cool things that I like about the Unity Asset Store too is that if you're a developer and you created a library, created assets, created tutorials, starter packs, you can actually sell those in the Unity Asset Store. You don't have to be a full game developer. You can just create these assets and uh, libraries and, and code and just sell it there. Yeah, that's a good point. Uh, it's it's kind of like a commerce market there. And so you can yeah. be an Asset Store author and... Um, write cool packages and, and little module units of things like AI behaviors or some system to do something. And then other game developers can plug that into their projects. There's the build server for cloud builds, um, Multiplay and Vivox for multiplayer services and, and voice chat are part of Unity. They have a CDN to use for your games. And Unity Reflect is a cool tool that lets you visualize and manipulate kind of uh, in real time CAD data. Uh, which I think is uh, pretty awesome. So if you're in any of those industries, uh, that would be something to check out. We also have uh, Microsoft GameStack. Um, if you're not familiar with GameStack, it's it's pretty much Microsoft's uh, kind of complete package and of our tools and services to help you build games. I mean, some I've highlighted here are Azure PlayFab. There is a Unity SDK for Azure PlayFab uh, to let you do things like make leaderboards and um, it also has a multiplayer service. The Unity SDK handles things for live ops too in your games. And then if you want to build your own, there's, there's always Microsoft Azure as well. And then we have GitHub and there's some community extensions to make working with GitHub and Unity projects simpler. And your, your uh, buddy Abdullah here, uh, game developer Abdullah, uh, has some great tutorial series and I have a link here to it aka.ms slash unity 101. And that is a great place to get started as well. And I think there's six videos there, right, Abdullah? Yeah, there are six videos that take you through the process that you just demoed. Um, and it will teach you step-by-step -step how to create a project, install Unity, install Visual Studio, and uh, start coding with, with C-sharp and Visual Studio, and uh, how to use the input system, physics, how to build things. Um, it's kind of... It, it's designed also for .NET developers mostly. So if you're already an established .NET developer, this is a really good place to start. Awesome. And here's some helpful links. Uh, slides will be available to you, but if you want to take a look now, you can get started at unity.com. Um, if you're brand new to Unity, uh, 
that is a good place to go as well. And we also have the documentation for the Visual Studio Tools for Unity, which is VSTU-started, and the couple of .NET tutorials there for Unity. And we also have the Microsoft GameStack Discord, um, which is a community with game developers of all backgrounds, uh, not just Unity developers as well. And if you are interested in .NET game development, maybe Unity is not the right choice for you, or maybe you're just interested in what else you can do with .NET and game, uh, game engines, um, there's also um, tons of options. Abdullah, do you want to talk about this a little bit? Yeah, so there are multiple types of game engines. There's most of the game engines that are uh, built with C++, but they also embed the .NET runtime in it, uh, like Unity, for example, CryEngine and Godot, and you can use C Sharp to script uh, for those engines. But there's also engines that are completely built with .NET, like Monogame, Stride, and Wave Engine. And, um, and yeah, and I think um, uh, Wave Engine and Stride are going to uh, support uh, .NET 5 pretty soon. So that's pretty exciting. Maybe Monogame too. Um, so if you're also familiar with the .NET ecosystem and you want to remain there, you want to use NuGet packages, you want to remain in the um, in kind of the, the world that you um, already familiar with, then maybe trying one of those would be a good idea. Yep, yeah, just go to .NET.Microsoft.com slash app slash games and you can go and take a look at all of these engines and uh, make your choice. Awesome. And that's it. Thanks for joining. If a conversation on Twitter is .NET Comp is the hashtag. You can ask questions, chat about, and uh, yeah, feel free to reach out to me on Twitter. My tag is in my name there at gmail.dev. Uh, happy to help if you have any questions about Unity or Visual Studio. Sure. I'm Do always there. Questions? I'm Indy Saudi. So. Try to contact me anytime you want. DMs are also open. All right. Um, so let's go and ask one question here from uh, the board. So Bitbonk asks, do you think there's a way to embed a Unity interactive 3D visualization into a .NET WPF application 3.1 or 5? Um, there is a way right now to embed Unity libraries inside of different .NET workloads. Um, soon, hopefully, you're going to see maybe more documentation and more blog posts about this. I'm working on it. But yes, the answer is yes. And uh, for you, Abdullah, what path or book do you recommend to begin developing with Unity from Diego? If you are a .NET developer, go to my videos right away, um, aka.ms slash Unity 101. Um, that's a good place to start. Uh, there's also a quick start tutorial on the .NET website. Um, there's also the Learn Portal in the .NET website where you can see um, a, a lot of community videos and tutorials out there that are developed by the community that you can go and start with them. Also, Unity have their own quick start uh, tutorials, and they just launched one with Lego, too. If you like Legos, you can go and try it out. Um, so yeah, there's so many choices out there. Awesome. Thank you so much for the session. It was great.